Isaiah 20 is one of the shortest chapters in the Bible, and it is also particularly notable for the oddity of God telling Isaiah to be unclothed while prophesying about Egypt and Ethiopia. But why did Isaiah preach naked? Isaiah 20 verses 1 to 4. Isaiah's prophecies were not just about God's judgment and restoration for the nation of Israel. Isaiah wrote of other nations as well, including Egypt. Isaiah 19 verses 1 to 15 describes Egypt's idolatry and judgment that was coming upon them at the hand of a mighty king, Isaiah 19 verse 4. Egypt had worshipped other gods and pursued their own wisdom, but even in judging this wickedness God would show grace and mercy. God would send to Egypt a savior, Isaiah 19 verse 20, and Egypt would be delivered. Egypt would one day know and worship the Lord, Isaiah 19 verse 21. Yes, judgment would come, Isaiah 19 verse 22, but God would ultimately save and heal the people. In the year 711 BC God spoke through Isaiah, Isaiah 20 verses 1 to 2. While on most other occasions Isaiah was simply delivering a verbal message, in this instance God told Isaiah to provide a visual as well, go, and loose the sackcloth from your waist and take off your sandals from your feet, Isaiah 20 verse 2, ESV. According to Isaiah 20 verse 3, Isaiah preached naked or at least nearly naked, he may have been wearing a loin cloth, and barefoot for three years as a sign for Egypt and Cush, Ethiopia. These peoples would be led into captivity by Assyria, shamed and naked, Isaiah 20 verse 4. Those who depended on Egypt, including Israel, could no longer look to that nation for deliverance, but instead should only depend on God. That Isaiah preached naked, or nearly naked, illustrated vividly that Egypt was not to be the source of anyone's deliverance. It served as a reminder to Israel that they needed to trust in God. It was a sign to Egypt that their prideful idolatry would be judged and they would be ashamed. In 701 BC, just as Isaiah had prophesied, Egypt fell to Assyria at El Tika. Judgment had come, and deservedly so. Yet God would bring a savior and a future restoration. Isaiah's preaching naked is a reminder to us that God is patient and gracious. God did not have to warn the people of Egypt, but he allowed them to have three years of warning so that individuals could prepare and even turn to the Lord. Further, God did not have to show Israel another example of how other nations could not deliver Israel, yet God did teach them this lesson over and over again. God wanted Israel to trust in him and lean on him, not on other peoples. We see God's patience and grace in our own lives as well. While Isaiah's ministry of preaching naked wasn't in our time, it shows that God cares about humanity and has used various means to communicate his message. The ultimate means of God's communication is in and through his Son, the Savior in whom we can trust for our deliverance, Hebrews 1 verses 1 to 2. God has made his love and way of deliverance clear to us in Jesus Christ, John 3 verse 16, and it shouldn't take Isaiah preaching naked for us to understand that and to trust in him. Who did God command to walk around naked for three years? The answer was Isaiah. This story is found in Isaiah 20 verses 2 to 3. It says, At the same time the Lord spoke by Isaiah the son of Amaz, saying, Go, and remove the sackcloth from your body, and take your sandals off your feet. And he did so, walking naked and barefoot. Then the Lord said, Just as my servant Isaiah has walked naked and barefoot three years for a sign and a wonder against Egypt and Ethiopia. After I mentioned this, someone asked me whether Isaiah was completely naked or not. So, I looked into it, and I would like to make a couple of clarifications and observations about this text. First, God did not explicitly command Isaiah to walk naked. The command that God gave was, Go, and remove the sackcloth from your body, and take your sandals off your feet. 
Isaiah had been wearing sackcloth. This was a symbol of mourning. We do not know why he was wearing it, though. Some have suggested he was mourning the loss of the northern tribes. Maybe it was part of an earlier prophecy about Zion, Isaiah 3 verse 24. Maybe it was the clothing of poor people. In Isaiah 20, God gives the command to Isaiah to take the sackcloth off to illustrate that Egypt would be conquered by Assyria and taken into captivity. Verse 4 says, So shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptians as prisoners and the Ethiopians as captives, young and old, naked and barefoot, with their buttocks uncovered, to the shame of Egypt. Second, did God's command for Isaiah to take off the sackcloth reduce Isaiah to complete nakedness? Several commentators that I read suggested that underneath the sackcloth Isaiah had on another layer of clothing similar to undergarments. Isaiah may not have been completely nude as a result, but the people of that day would consider him naked since all that he had on were his undergarments. Some commentators suggested that God would not command someone to do this because it would be immodest. However, it would be immodest for Isaiah to walk around in his underwear too. One commentator, Edward Young, said, If Isaiah, however, were to go about naked, would he not be conducting himself dishonorably? Would he not be doing something shameful that would cast despite upon his prophetic influence? In answer, we can only say that acting in obedience to God can never be a thing of shame, Young, The Book of Isaiah, a commentary, Eerdmans, 1969, v.2, pages 54 to 55. He goes on to explain that Isaiah probably had on undergarments. Third, we should note that sometimes God commands people to do things that are different to the standard set of moral commands that he gives human beings. God commanded Abraham to sacrifice his son, Isaac, Genesis 22 verse 2. God commanded the Israelites to kill all the Canaanites, Deuteronomy 20 verses 16 to 18. God put a lying spirit into the mouth of King Ahab's false prophets, 1 Kings 22 verse 23. God commanded Hosea to marry a harlot, Hosea 1 verse 2. These are unusual commands. They were special situations where God exercised his divine prerogative for specific reasons. God's command to Isaiah falls into this category. We need to be careful that we do not judge God by the same standards that God judges us. He is not a human. Job tried to do this and God rebuked him for it because, in the words of Elihu, God is greater than man, Job 33 verse 12. Closing Thought God's message to the Jews in Isaiah 20, graphically illustrated by the prophet's sign act of walking naked and barefoot, exhorts his people to trust fully in him. This message is echoed some 2,700 years later, when the writer of Hebrews urges Jewish Christians not to return to old covenant practices but to trust fully in Christ and his finished work on the cross. Just as the Jews of Isaiah's day would watch the Egyptians and Ethiopians be taken captive by the Assyrians and ask, How shall we escape? So the writer of Hebrews tells first-century Christians to remain faithful to Christ or face his divine discipline. How will we escape if we neglect so great a salvation?